Okay, we continue section 22 hydrogen bonds. Refers to non covalent attractive interactions between dipoles when the positive end of one dipole is a hydrogen atom bonded to a highly electronegative atom such as hydrogen, nitrogen, or fluorine, and the negative end of the other dipole is an atom with a lone pair of electrons such as hydro, uh, nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. Now, hydrogen bonds can be of two forms linear, as you can see here. And nonlinear. Now, when the hydrogen in a molecule that forms the hydrogen bond is referred to as a hydrogen bond donor, this molecule, and the other is referred to as a hydrogen bond acceptor. So here, water acts as a hydrogen bond donor, and this molecule acts as a hydrogen bond acceptor. Now, nonlinear. Bonds are weaker than bonds in which all three atoms lie in a straight line. Then this bond is weaker than this. Nonlinear hydrogen bond is weaker than linear, where the three atoms lie in a straight line. Now, why why does water have such interesting and unique properties now? If we consider the hydrogen bonding sites in three molecules, HF, water, and NH3. If we compare these three molecules, as you can see, each HF molecule has one hydrogen bond donor and the three hydrogen bond acceptors. Each water molecule has two donors and two acceptors. Each ammonia molecule has a three donors and one acceptor. Now each water molecule can be involved in four hydrogen bonds. Now the geometric arrangement of the hydrogen bonded water molecules has important implications for the properties of water as a solvent. The bond angle, as I said before, 104.3 and the angle between the unshared pairs of electrons is similar. The result is a tetrahedral arrangement, as you can see here. Water molecules. Now, liquid water consists of hydrogen bonded arrays that resemble ice crystals. Each of these arrays can contain up to 100 water molecules. The hydrogen bonding between water molecules can be seen more clearly in the regular lattice structure of the ice crystal, as it can be seen here. Now, in liquid water, hydrogen bonds are constantly breaking and new ones are constantly forming, with some molecules breaking off and others joining the cluster. Cluster can break up and reform in 10 to the minus 10 to 10 to the minus 11 seconds in water at 25 degrees centigrade. Whereas an ice crystal, in contrast, has a more or less stable arrangement of hydrogen bonds. And of course, its number of molecules in many orders of magnitude greater than 100. So when we say that water molecule can form four hydrogen bonds, this is in the ice. Whereas, uh, whereas in liquid, it is less than that, about 2.3. And this is due to the constant dish. Uh, break, breaking and the forming of the hydrogen bonds in liquid water. Now, hydrogen bonds are much weaker than normal covalent bonds, as I showed you in a previous table, where I said that bond strength is measured by bond energy, the energy required to break that bond. So, covalent bond is stronger than all non-covalents, including the hydrogen bond. Even though hydrogen bonds are weaker than covalent, they have a significant effect on the physical properties of hydrogen bonded compounds. For example, here if we compare three molecules, water, ammonia, and methane, all of them have uh, close molecular weights we see the differences in meeting and boiling point between them and water. Water zero, ammonia minus seven. 
with n minus 182. The boiling point water 100, ammonia minus 33, and then with n minus 161. So as you can see, all of this is because water is unique and it is a structure and its physical properties as a solvent. Now, halogen bonding between polar groups and water. If a polar solute can serve as a donor or an acceptor of hydrogen bonds, it can form hydrogen bonds with water, of course, participate in non-specific dipole-dipole interactions. As we said before, this is alcohol and water, ketone and water, amine and water. So water can form hydrogen bonds with all these types. One time it acts as a hydrogen bond acceptor and one time as a hydrogen bond donor. But the question that arises is the presence of water is necessary to form hydrogen bonds? The answer is no, because in biological molecules, hydrogen bonds can form, for example, in, in DNA or RNA to stabilize the three-dimensional structure or the or the helical structure of DNA. So, as we said before, hydrogen bonds formed in water, okay, and then bonding of water to other molecules, okay, but here we have important hydrogen bonding in protein and nucleic acid structure. As we will see later, hydrogen bond is important in stabilizing the protein secondary structure. Now we move to section 3, acids and bases. Generally speaking, uh, an acid that is defined as a molecule that behaves as a proton donor, and this is known as a bronsted acid, whereas a bronsted base is a molecule that behaves as a proton acceptor. Now, what about the acid strength? Tendency of an acid to discharge to hydrogen ion and its conjugate base, characterized by the so-called Acid dissociation constant or Ka, which can be written in this way. Now, the greater the value of Ka, the stronger is the acid, and of course, this is correct form of equation. We always and, uh, neglect water in, for simplification, but water must be there. So this is the correct form of the equation. And this is called hydronium ion, but for simplicity, we put it as H plus. This is a proton. Now, ionization of water. Let's quantitatively examine the dissociation of water. So this is, again, Ka, concentration of H plus times OH minus divided by concentration of water. The molar concentration of pure water is 55.5 molar plus, plus Ka equal this and instead of concentration of water we we put 55.5 and then k has a given value we multiply them together to get a new constant called kw and this is called the ion product constant for water so this is called measure of the tendency of water to associate to give h plus and OH minus this is called the end product constant for water. Numerical value can be determined by measuring H plus of pure water. In monoprotic acids, these two H plus molar concentration equal OH minus molar concentration. At 25 degrees centigrade in pure water, these two values are equal and equal to 10 to the minus 7 molar. At 25 degrees centigrade, the numerical value of KW is given by this value K. W, 10 to the minus 7 times 10 to the minus 7, and this is equal to 10 to the minus 14. Of course, the quantity Kw is a dimensionless, dimensionless quantity. Now, we we'll define uh, something called pH. Now, uh, if you have a quantity of acid and you want to measure its pH, you can measure by a pH meter. But also, pH can be however calculated. Uh, by using this formula, pH equal minus minus uh, equal minus log to the base 10 of molar concentration of H plus. So, if you have, for example, a 
0.1 molar solution of HCl then its pH will equal H minus log 0.1 and this is equal 1 now difference of 1 pH unit implies a tenfold difference in H plus neutral solutions have pH equal 7 acidic solutions have pH less than 7 and basic solutions have pH more than 7 now, in a similar way, we can define pKa, and pKa, this is convenient for acid strength, equal minus log uh, the base 10 Ka. Now, the smaller the value of pKa, the stronger is the acid. Here, we can look at this example, 2.1 pH calculations. In pure water, if H plus equal 1 times 10 to the minus 7 molar and pH equal 7, Calculate the pH of the following aqueous solutions 1 times 10 to the minus 3 molar HCl, 1 times 10 to the minus 4 molar NH. Now we assume that the self ionization of water makes a negligible contribution to the concentration of hydron ions, which will typically be true unless the solutions are extremely dilute. Usually, the source of H plus in solution comes from uh, the acid uh, itself or and from the dissociation of water but we neglect the concentration the dissociation of water contribution unless we have extremely dilute solutions so the key points in the approach to this problem are the definition of pH which needs to be used in both parts and the self dissociation of water needed in the second part A for 1 times 10 to the minus 3 molar HCl the concentration of H plus equal 1 times 10 to the minus 3 molar because HCl is a strong acid and it dissociates completely. Therefore, pH equal 3. For 1 times 10 to the minus 4 molar and your solution, we must find first uh, the, the concentration of H plus from the ion product constant. Now, the concentration of OH minus from this is equal. 1 times 10 to the minus 4 molar and these two quantities equal this we substitute uh, OH minus here and calculate H plus to be 1 times 10 to the minus 10 molar and therefore pH equal 10 the henderson hasselbalch equation why do we want to know the pH? an equation that connects the Ka of any weak acid with the pH of a solution containing both the acid and its conjugate base. This relationship has wide use in biochemistry, especially where it is necessary to control pH for optimum reaction conditions. Some reactions cannot take place if the pH varies from the optimum value. So important biological macromolecules lose activity at extremes of pH. Now, if we look at this figure, if we look at this figure, which shows us the pH versus, shows the, how the activities of the enzymes are affected by pH, note that each one has a peak, a peak activity that falls off rapidly as the pH is changed from the optima. For example, here, for pepsin, we see that the, the pH for maximum activity or optimum activity is around 2. For trypsin, it is around 6. And for lysozyme, it's about 5. So pepsin, trypsin, and lysozyme all have steep pH optimum curves. Pepsin has a maximum activity under very acidic conditions. And this is expected. Why? Because pepsin uh, is a digestive enzyme that is found in the stomach. Lysozyme, however, has maximum activity near pH 5 and trypsin near pH 6. Now, let's derive the so-called the henderson hasselbalch equation. It is a mathematical relationship, as I said, between the pKa of an acid and the pH of solution containing the acid and its conjugate base can be determined as follows. K equal this times this divided by this. 
we take log both sides, multiply by minus, and then substitute the definition pH minus log H plus pKa minus log Ka, and then we get this equation. This is known as the Henderson Hasselbalch equation. Now, when the concentration of weak acid and its conjugate base are equal, the pH of the solution equals the pK of the acid. So here, when pH equal pK, when this quantity equal zero, and when this quantity equal zero, when A minus concentration equal H A concentration, this is one log one is zero. So this is a special case of the equation. You know, pH will equal pKa of the weak acid when the concentration of the acid equal the concentration of its conjugate base. So in summary, for this section, acids are proton donors and bases are proton acceptors. Water can accept or donate protons. The strength of an acid is measured by its acid dissociation constant called Ka. The larger the Ka, the stronger the, the acid. Now the concentration of H plus is expressed conveniently as the pH. A similar expression pKa can be used to in place of the Ka, so pKa equal minus log Ka. And the pH of a solution of a weak acid and its conjugate base is related to the concentration of the acid and base and the pKa by the so-called Henderson-Hasselbalch equation.